first take. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Point of View podcast. And I am, again, not alone. This is the second interview, and we're with. Should I call you Ambassador? Yep, uh, I'll go by the, the name of Ambassador or uh, Royal Ambassador. Hmm. And you manage um, European Wrestling Federation or Foundation? How was it called? Yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the EWF. EWF. So when did it was so when it was started? Um well the EWF has actually been around for quite some time. Uh you know, it's uh certainly it's been going for at least six, seven years now. Um but it it kind of goes in seasons, so it, it takes a break and then it comes back and then um uh, we have other you know, it, it it's kind of seasonal really as well. So it's not not a continuous fed. It, it kind of takes its break so that people don't get burnt out. That's, so, like, this is a 2K fed. So... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For the people that don't know, this is this um, fed is actually a 2K fed, and it's on 2K 19 and 20, right? Yeah, we've been using... Uh... Well, we're actually using 2K17 as well now. So we've got three shows going out at the moment. So we've got 2K17, 2K19, and 2K20. So for the 2K21, since that's more updated, I want to know because I might get 2K20 on Christmas. I want to know if, if it's still broken. Like, is it still broken or is or is patched up? Well, um, we've got we've had a couple of big patches on 2K20, as you know, and um, I the last one was nearly a couple of weeks ago now. Um, I had a look after the last patch, uh, trying to have a look at the universe mode, and um, had some difficulties still using that, and uh, some of the um, um, the the use of the pictures, like the um, you, you, using your your own kind of tattoos and uh, emblems and things like that for the for the arenas, so there's there's still issues with the game, and in my opinion, the game is still not playable. Okay, so for me, the universe still crashes. Uh, you know, whenever whenever you want to delete a logo, it crashes, and I'm only I'm only talking from the PS4 perspective. I don't know what it's like for the Xbox, but uh, from from my perspective, the game is still not playable really. Well, that's answer my question. Should I get it? But I might still get it, though, just to uh, join some feds and all that stuff. But what was in that question? Which one do you prefer? 2K19 or, t- or any other um, 2K games? Like, which one's more better? Like, stable? Um, yeah. I mean, I think... Uh... I've never owned 2K19, but I've got a one of my um, guys in the EWF. He's producing our flagship television show, Horizon, which is uh, used uh, under 2K19, and it's pretty good. It looks pretty stable to me. It looks pretty smooth. Um, it's got more or less everything that 2K20's got, and uh, he's. Uh, it, it looks like to me, um, it's a better product overall. Um, 2K20 is different in certain ways, like um, the skins and the the attire has been brightened up a little bit, and you have mixed tag team matches on there as well. I think um, the simulated matches are slightly better, so there's more, you know, a little bit more chain wrestling in 2K20. Um, so, you know, overall, I think the actual simulation, the actual matches are a little bit better in 2k20 but uh, i mean i only use play mode at the moment because that's the only mode that really kind of works without crashing so uh um but if i was going to place a bet on it at the moment i think 2k19 would probably be my you know would tick all the boxes yeah i when i started e-fetting on 2k19 it was 
I used to choreograph my matches with well, some of them, but at the same time, I simulate the, the um matches because it'd be fun simulating. Like it's not as good as Fire Pro. Fire Pro simulation is amazing, but it's still cool being a part of the of the community, though. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I mean, 2K19 um, community runs through until May of next year, um, as I understand it. And then, you know, the online version, you won't be able to have access to the community, online community from then. So, um, and then that's when everybody goes out and buys 2K20, so they can still play online. Um, For me... I mean, you know, I just bought 2K20 and I had no idea how bad it was going to be. Um, I, you know, it was released on the 20th or 22nd of October, I think. And um, it's still not playable now, which I think is really bad, to be honest. And um, I, I'm not going to, I probably won't be buying any more of the games when they first come out. I'll probably leave it a good couple of months and next time, I think. <laughs> That's what I've been doing lately. So I don't really buy games, like, in general. I don't really buy games when they first come out. The only time I did that, I'll be honest with you, the only time I did that was when I pre-ordered Mortal Kombat, Fire Pro, and I guess some other games. I don't remember. That's the only time. Because I know they'll be stable enough offline. But online, they probably won't. But I don't really play online like that. Anyways... When you when did you start e fetting? Oh, I started e fetting quite some time ago. I mean, I've been e fetting for uh, something like 15, 18 years. Um, so uh, I think I started in like a just a standard role play written uh, sort of e fetting style, really. Um, and uh, it was like the XWF. I think it was called Extreme Wrestling Federation or something. I think they're still going today, um, the XWF. And uh, uh, it was great. You know, it was uh, – I started off by kind of – I used to sort of, you know – I've always preferred doing things other than writing role plays. Um, I find writing role plays and reading other people's role plays. I mean, I can read other people's role plays, but writing my own, I just find it, you know, I can, you know, drift off and it's never really worked for me. But when I record my own stuff and my own role plays, um, it was kind of having an impact even back then. And uh, I've been in many different feds under the name of Royal Ambassador. So Royal Ambassador was just kind of like, you know, uh, an arrogant royal guy with a crown and lives in a big mansion in the English countryside and um, very stereotypical sort of uh, royalty. And uh, he goes in as a, an arrogant heel in the ring and he, he likes technical wrestling, which is, you know, the kind of the, the, the British style wrestling, which is known as the, the map base, you know, chain wrestling, British style. So um, it's the kind of thing that you're, you kind of seen in NXT UK now, you know, where, you know, the, the, the guy that runs it is used to be on the TV years ago here in, in the UK. Um, so that's where Royal Ambassador came about. And then um, I, I, I started running my own Fed in, in Fed Wars and um, I started I started e-fedding there. And uh, really, I enjoy running my own feds much more than I do uh, actually participating in them. So I've been a fed head for many years as well. So, uh, yeah, it's been quite a a journey. It sounds like a journey because I lived for 18 years. I started e-fedding like last year, (laughs) like last year, like two years ago. I I don't remember. But like, the, yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> e fetting is actually pretty fun. It like, it, it, it's 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 basically a hobby, but it gets so frustrating after a while because you got because you got to think of storylines, got to think of this, got to think of that. It's like yeah. a promotion. Um, e fetting is actually a hobby, and I would agree it is a hobby. 
Um, but I think it takes up, it's, it's quite a commitment really as a hobby. You know, if I was saying, I don't know, if I was in a team and I was playing a sports game and I had to train and I had to play a match at the weekend and I had to uh, go to rewards evenings, it's kind of a similar commitment really in terms of being an, a fed head because, uh, you know, you have to be available for people that want to ask you questions. You have to be able to produce shows like I do the video eFed uh, style. So it's a lot of hours that you have to put in. Uh, it's, um, you know, you have to be able to read all the role plays. You have to be able to work the, the, the chat channels or the forums, depending on what what you're using. It, it's a real commitment. Yeah, it, it takes hours. Of, of uh, I mean, it's not just recording a show now. Obviously, you have to edit them and then you have to upload them to YouTube. These things can take a couple of hours just to, you know, edit and upload. So it is a big commitment and it is a hobby, uh, but it's... Um, I think um, it can be underestimated by some. I think the the, the amount of hours it actually takes uh, uh, out of your life. So it really be like that. Like I remember the first time I ever started e fading. Like I did say last year. That's when I actually was committed to it. When I like years ago. I used to run a effect called Underground Wrestling. That was a, um, I think a two K sixteen or seventeen. I don't remember. I think it was sixteen when I started that fed. It was, it was trash. Like <laughs> when I look back at it now, I'm like, dang, I really made this. And then I started Frontline, then AZW, and then all these other different feds. Like commitment to a Fed is very difficult, especially when you have so many plans, but you got another idea of doing stuff, and then it starts, then that takes over. It's just so much. It's... Yeah. Um, I think real life can take over. You know, I've always said one, one golden ruling that I've always had in, in, in terms of what I've said to people if somebody says, Oh, sorry, I didn't have time to role play this week, or sorry, I haven't been active just lately. My answer is that's okay because real life comes first. You know, we call it RL comes first. You know, um, it's like one of those things that people are at school or people are studying, some people are working full time. You know, it's it's like this is a hobby. At the end of the day, if you want to, I mean, people don't get me wrong. There's plenty of people out there that take it really seriously, and they really like it and they really enjoy it. And um, but I've always said real life comes first. And that's what I say to everybody, you know, um, in the EWF, most people will say, well, there's an injuries and a, an absence channel. And I'll post in there if they can't role play for the next match or for the next. Somebody said the other day, oh, I, I got some college um, stuff going on. Uh, I said, well, you know, that's fine. They were out for three weeks. They needed the time. That's OK. They just come back in. Uh, not a problem at all, you know. I think that was very convenient of you doing that. Like, literally. Like, you have a injuries and appearances and all that stuff. That is actually a pretty good idea. That is... I never seen anybody actually use that. Because sometimes people, they will have commitments to something else outside of life. I mean, in life, so they don't know what to do. Just like in the real wrestling world, creative, you know, they just like, oh my God, I don't know what to do because like, he can't make it to his show. So what are we going to do with this? What are we going to do with that? But that's actually pretty smart because, like, it really is. And, like, <laughs> I want to know, have you ever been – in like a creator's block when it comes down to your feds or stuff. Have I ever been a say again? Like a creator's block, like, like you have an idea, but you can't go through with it because you're stuck. Like you're stuck. Um, how explain this? <laughs> it's like 
you wanted to do something, but but you can't do it because you're stuck in that idea and you can't like go through with it. I don't know how to explain it. Um, I I have certainly I certainly do have ideas um, about you know if somebody if if a particular character catches my eye and they they kind of. Um, you know, uh, I think I can, you know, get them a good entrance and get them a good appearance and and, and, and uh, uh, put them over it in a certain way, then that, then I'll do that. Um, but what I tend to do is I empower the people within the Fed to kind of make up their own mind about the direction they want their own characters to go in. And if they want to team up with somebody and come up with a story or a feud or do whatever they want to do, I tend to find that it retains people rather than me coming up with the creative elements of it because I can't be responsible for being creative for like 20 people. So um, right now in the EWF, there's a load of stories going on. There's different characters doing different things. We got people being jumped by masked people. We got people, you know, trying to win titles. We got people opening up feuds backstage, you know, there's a lot of things going on, and and that's not really me. I'm not I'm not behind it all of that. You know that they're, they're all, you know they're all creative in their own right. They all do their own stuff. So I'd rather people come up with their own ideas and be creative themselves, and then obviously they take responsibility for it. And, and again, they 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 start to enjoy it more. Really, I think if um, people are being creative, um, there's some really really creative people in the EWF, and. Um, and there's a lot of people out there that would, you know, help somebody. If somebody's at a dead end, I've had people say to me, oh, Ambassador, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I, I think my character's dying or, you know, um, can I, you know, can I, I've been out for a while. Can How am I going to get back in? But there's a lot of people in the, in the EWF that are prepared to help somebody out and get them back in. And that's that's kind of the way I think it should be. What comes when it comes down to feds, I do agree with that. Like, let the people have creative. Basically, let them do what they want to do. But there are some limitations. Like, there are some good things about it. There's some bad things about it. Sometimes the story doesn't make sense. But sometimes it does. So it's like, it is a good idea letting other people have their freedom to do what they to do what they want to make the show more interesting. I feel like some feds don't really have that. Some do. Well, most do. But sometimes I feel like having too much control over your show is going to make things a lot more harder on that person. Especially the owner who who's also doing creative, it's gonna be a lot more harder. But I, I think I agree with that. I, I agree that having too much control over the shows and what happens on those shows, you know, every match, every segment, is isn't really good overall. I mean, um, I've just recently given control to my flagship show Horizon, which goes out on Sunday nights. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I got a guy that's uh, producing the show. He's booking the show. He's coming up with all the ideas. He's actually going to be hosting the pay per view, which is coming up at our Clash of Christmas on the 29th of December. And um, he's going to be, um, he runs that show. I have still have overall creative control, you know, and, you know, if I don't like the way something's going or progressing or, uh, you know, if I don't think somebody deserves something, then I'll, then I'll just come in and, and I'll say. But overall, I think you're right that allowing creative control to other people, um, not just me as a Fed owner, um, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to. Um, I, I think it just allows people more freedom to be able to participate and help out and do all those things. And they just enjoy it more. They, they do enjoy it more because I, I could see through both people's eyes as a owner. I could see, you know, letting people have creative control could be a bad thing. 
but I can see it through the superstars' eyes or the wrestlers' eyes that like it's a good thing because they get to be themselves. And not and not a lot of wrestlers wanted it to be themselves. They want to be this certain persona. Whether in promos, whether in in ring, because you know, they want to be a certain gimmick instead of being who they want to be. Like, I'll be honest with you. I don't care if you want to be a a um demon or something like that, but you got to make it original. You can't just be like like an Undertaker or a Kane or a Boogeyman or something like that. You got to be like, try something a little bit different. That's just my real thing. Yes, I think I think you're right. There's, um, you know, there's a lot. That, I mean, I, I I truly believe in original feds. You know, mine is my EWF has always been original. You know, it's never been any. We've had a couple of people that came in and said, "Oh, you know what? I fancy being a John Cena," or, you know, and, uh, and even calling themselves uh, somebody called themselves Mark Gargano. Uh, Johnny Gargano, whatever, you know, and the the music was the same, just changing a name, just changing their Christian name and keeping the surname of the original wrestler. And I, I said, well, you know, this is an original fed, you know, and um, the moves were the same. I think that the idea is it's okay to copy some of the moves in the ring just because we were a visual e-fed, you know, we what we're playing a game at the end of the day and. Uh, the game controls much of the outcomes of you know what happens in the in the show. So, um, I just think that um, you know the it's originality. Um, people have got a lot of stories to tell, and, and it's it, it's it's that uh, you know that constant moving on, having the story uh, continue, um, and and I think it's great. And and you know people are recording some great audio role plays in the EWF as well. So. Uh, yeah, I think it's um it's working out really well. So it's working out because wait if they're gonna do recording promos, is it just gonna be on the show or just exclusively on the Discord? Um well um I've I've been out and added segments in myself um, as an as a the owner of the EWF and been on the mic and I've had other people on the mic doing promos challenging people and we've had a few altercations in the ring, but um, in terms of what I mean by audio role play, it, it's just a substitute for actually writing one. So if if somebody wants to record an audio role play, it counts just as much as any written role play would, and um, you know. You can still have the in-ring time if it's booked and there's a segment in the ring. Um, in fact, to be honest, we've been having less in-ring mic segments recently. Um, I, you know, I used to do a lot of in-ring mic challenges and people coming out to the ring. Um, again, you're limited to what the game will allow you to do. Um, but I think that um, the, re- the the audio role plays have been really successful. We've had some great ones. People in character, um, talking in a, a, hearing somebody's voice, you know, and um, having music in the background or sound effects like a storm or a creepy sort of element to it. And it, it just makes it real and it, it really works. It, it really, it really is a good way to do it, I think. It is a really good way. Like, I've seen audio promos on fire pro it was it's pretty cool even though the game's very limited to what they to what 2k can do but i think is i think audio promos are actually one of the best things that's coming out of efeds that's just my opinion because like i don't mind reading promos i really don't mind reading promos but actually hearing them and the emotion coming from him, it sells. So, when it comes down to segments, 
for them, I think it will sell the segment very well. But, yeah, that's just me. Well, I, I mean, I, I have tried to um, pitch audio, short audio role plays into the shows. And um, we did have, you know, the, unfortunately, you just can't match the audio role plays with the movement of the characters in the ring and then when they're speaking it, it just really doesn't work and um well i i've tried it people some people said that they couldn't hear it properly um so you know we've tried it we try these things but um you probably i'd find that you know you're more in just going into the ring and just saying something and then somebody else comes out you kind of have to just roll with what the game is giving you at the time and so a lot of it's just improvisation so it's not really that much. You, you, you can get an outcome, but you're not planning the whole thing. It's kind of just improvised. You go in there, you get the outcome you want at the end of it. And, um, yeah, that leads on to a match later on that night or uh, a storyline being progressed in one way or another. This is like a um, thought, but have you guys ever, like, worked with other fits or some, like do like a collab show or like trade talent or some. I've tried that once before. There was, uh, I used to belong to, Efed Zone, which was uh, like a multi-fed kind of setup, and um, there were a couple of feds on there that you know there were a few feds and. Someone said, "Well, you know, if we if you if we team up and join forces, then we can just have everybody together, and you know, and it'll work well. You know, we we'll be able to get more people in the game, as such. But um, it kind of, I'm not really the, the greatest uh, fan of uh, working with other feds because." Uh, a lot of people choose the owner of feds as well. They're not just choosing the fed, but they're choosing the person that owns the fed. And, um, you know, when they make their choice. Uh, so, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, it's just part of, part of being in the e-fed game that I've learned over the years is, that, you know, joining forces with people. It doesn't kind of, it doesn't always work out really. You said they choose the owner of what's that supposed to mean? Well, when uh, not everybody, but some people, um, when they go and choose a fed to go into, when they apply to go to a certain e fed, they are applying to the fed, but they're also aware of who the owner is. Um, Sometimes in uh, where where I used to be, there was a multitude of, of feds in the same under the same uh, 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 internet, the web page. So everybody knew each other anyway. So there was competitiveness between the feds, and what what was happening was some people would just gravitate towards certain feds because people they they got on well with the owners, <clears throat> and um, they would just go into those feds, but. Some people, you know, would prefer to work with some people and they wouldn't work with everybody. And that's kind of how it used to work. So um, I always find that because I run a quite a distinctive, I've got a quite a distinctive way of operating uh, and it doesn't always fit with what other people want to do that, you know, it's really difficult to coexist with another EFED um, at the same time and, kind of agree on the way that the Fed's going to run. Now I understand. Because um, when I first started being like an actual e wrestler, I didn't know nobody. <laughs> well, I know some people, but is this they got different consoles or different like versions of the game? Like, like, like Fire Pro. I know everybody in the Fire Pro community, especially especially in the PC. Well, not everybody, but like I know 
some that I'm cool with. There's some cool dudes. And like for the 2K community, especially with the 2K community, you don't know, like, I don't really know nobody in this community. Like, the ones I do know, they have different consoles, different versions of the game, or whatever. So, like, I can't pick and choose who I want to work with because there's so many different, especially on Twitter, so many different personalities. You just don't, you just don't know if they might be cool or they might be some assholes. Well, I guess it's, uh, you know, doing, when you're dealing with anything online, you're going to come across all sorts of people and, you know, um, you just don't know who people are really, you know, um, to a certain extent, everybody's kind of, you know, they've got their own usernames. They can be who they want to be. Um, it's just one of those things with interacting online with lots of different people. Um, I guess um, people make their own judgments. And um, you say <laughs> a few assholes, you know, coming across on Twitter, um, you know, uh, you don't have to be an arsehole for someone to judge you. And, uh, you know, you, you can get judged anyway. You know, it'll be whether or not it doesn't really make any difference what that, you know, but they will come up with their own minds about who they think you are. Um, and uh, they will behave accordingly. That's how people are. Um, uh, it's happened before. And, you know, Oh, yeah, someone gets a, an idea of someone and they think, oh, well, he's, you know, it's not being fair. Um, he's booking different people. Uh, certain people are losing matches and or, you know, people are, some people aren't getting the same opportunities as some other people. Um, or I don't like this guy or, you know, there's so many things, so many reasons why somebody can, you know, not get on. I think it's it, 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 what what I find is I give people the benefit of the doubt anyway, and I I kind of you can misinterpret what people are saying when they're typing stuff into a website, and um, it's just like sending somebody a text. You know, um, people can misinterpret the way meanings and things can get out of hand pretty quickly. Um, luckily for us, we've got quite a team behind us. You know, it's not just me. It's uh, staff team and we've got a lot of gms now i've just appointed a new one so we've three one two one two three four gms now so um when i'm not around those guys i know that they take care of the uh the the uh discord and there's there, we've had a few problems but not that many to be honest you know things get resolved you know people have their differences and that's just what we have to accept at the end of the Yep, yep, yep. People have the differences. We just got to accept it. People got opinions. We got to accept it. And at the end of the day, we're still human. And we're just here because we want to, you know, be a part of the community. Some people just don't understand that. Especially when it comes down to, like, certain, like, stuff. Like, what I'm trying to say is, like, it comes down to the 2K community or the Fire Pro community or any other game community because I've seen people still play the old WWE games and run it as a fed. It's it's cool just to see that. But sometimes you just gotta go with the flow. That's all I wrote. That's all I can say about that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I just, like, do you watch any other people feds, like, like, 2K feds or any other game feds or board feds or something? Um, I, uh, I don't really do that, to be honest, no. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of feds that have caught my eye. Um, like I know you're, I think you're a member of eFed Hub, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So I joined eFed Hub, and the guy that owns that is um Abby. Um, he he was one of the first members of the EWF, and um, 
he created uh, eFed Hub um, after he'd had a successful uh, reign uh, in the EWF as um, the, one of the EWF women's champions. Um, we had Sabrina. So um, I keep an eye on eFed Hub. I have watched a few shows, um, the CWL in um, Universe in EFED Hub looks pretty good. And it was a unique um, sort of way of operating that the a CWL are um, AI based, 100% AI results. So, you know, they just, they just adjust the attribute settings of the wrestlers and then the more active you are, the higher attributes are. And eventually you just get to compete with the main event guys. Um, but apart from that, it's AI only. So nobody can really complain about the outcome of the matches. So I thought that was pretty good. They're, they're pretty approachable people. And uh, um, there's a lot of people in CWL. It seemed like quite a, a popular fed. Um, but apart from that, I haven't really kept my eye on any other particular feds out there. You know, they're, um, there's quite a few of them, so uh, I'm too busy uh, watching wrestling in real life, you know, because I'm a big wrestling fan, you know, as well. So, you know, it's uh, uh, I don't really have time to watch a lot of efeds, uh, other efeds out there. This this might sound weird, but sometimes I watch more of efeds than real wrestling. I don't know why, but like I'm trying to keep up with New Japan. Cage of Death, CZ, like CZW Cage of Death just aired around Saturday. I missed that. I, I need to watch that. I don't know why. I just like Cage of Death, especially with the hardcore stuff. My God. <laughs> but, but I understand that. Like, sometimes real wrestling is actually, well, it's still popular, especially with, like, the newest AEW like promotion came along. Now wrestling's trying to get a boom. Then you got the NWA. It's just a it's a wonderful time to be a wrestling fan, especially around this time of the year, Wrestle Kingdom and almost WrestleMania season. My God, it's gonna be a wonderful time to be a wrestling fan. I um I wouldn't I wouldn't really have got into e fedding without being a wrestling fan at heart. Um, if I wasn't into wrestling, I wouldn't be doing e fedding. So the way I see it is, you know, I was a wrestling fan. I've always been a wrestling fan from a young age. Um, it's in, you know, in me, and um, so therefore that's how I started to, I guess, you know, get into e fedding, but. I'm going to shows still. I go to NXT shows. Um, I've been to one this year, um, but I'm watching all of the shows. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan, really. So wrestling's a big part of my life, yeah. Wrestling's been a big part of my life, too. I think everybody can agree with that. Wrestling, like, without wrestling, they wouldn't have got into e Because without... Because... E fed is technically wrestling, so of course got to be re- so. You, of course, you got to know some wrestlers or wrestling. If it's the other way around, then that is something that I would love to see. <laughs> but what was the first wrestling game you ever played? Uh, first wrestling game that I ever played. Uh, wow, that's um, I. Do you know, I'm just trying to think of some of the... I can't even think of some early wrestling games out there. Um, I I used to own a PC from an early age, just trying to think where the... Uh, would have been on the PC. I I, I mean, the, I was running shows on WW, w, uh, 2K12. Sorry, WWE12. I missed that uh, game. Yeah, uh, that was the start of it, really. Uh, when I started really getting into the video efeds, um, but um, b- before that, uh, don't think I mean I don't think I was playing anything. Oh, the the um, 
the text-based game, the wrestling game that you can you, you can play, um, where you kind of own your own wrestling fed, and and then you have to try and get good. At, you have to try and make the matches and make the 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 company grow, and then compete with other companies. Um, I think it's called CEW or something. Yeah, I know that. Oh, um, yeah, so I play a little bit of that when it, in its early days as well. Um, there's not, there wasn't a great amount before um, WWE 12. I can't remember that many games being out there, really. Um, not in the way that I like to play them. You know, I, again, I don't pick games, wrestling games up and play them. You know, I, I just use them for to simulate outcomes of matches. So I'm kind of watching the matches. Um, and that kind of it kind of works out for me. So yeah, I remember WWE twelve, WWE thirteen. I never played fourteen. I played fifteen, all, all the way to <laughs> all the way to nineteen. But I like I only own like like officially own. Only two SmackDown vs. Raw games. 09 and 11 on the PS Vita. On the Mac, yes. But um, other than that, I rented the old SmackDown vs. Raw games on that stuff. And they were, they were inexperienced. <laughs> but... Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I, I can remember when you used to be able to rent games, but um, I've always been into online. I've been, I'm, I'm, you know, I've been playing games for a long time. You know, I've played lots of online games. Um, but the wrestling games is, is something that came on a little bit later for me in the evening. So, hmm. I, I, um, what was I about to say? There've been some. Big EFES that Wait, is well there. known, getting a lot of attention. Like Would you want to be like one of those big EFES or you just want a cult following? Like, you can be small, but oh, something like a PWG a or Ring of Honor type. Um, well, the big EFES, um, I guess, have grown over the years and they've got, you know, managed to, to recruit staff members to help them out. So they may have two or three brands in there, um, like, you know, two or three shows a week, big shows. And um, there's plenty of people around to help out and, and develop the thing. Um, I guess I wouldn't be opposed to the EWF growing that big. Um but there are advantages and disadvantages to both, you know, having 30 people enjoying themselves and having a great time and, um, you know, producing shows each and every week and everybody being a little tight community. That's one, you know, one way of looking at it. And the other way is uh, if you're a bit part of something big, wouldn't that be exciting? You know, um, I'm just one of these guys that just kind of, I'm pretty chilled about it. You know, if it happens, it happens. Um, I think right now, the EWF is about as big as it ever has been. Um, you know, we're kind of nearly 30 people strong. And, um, you know, I've got more subscribers on YouTube now than before. Um, I don't know. I think it's just, um, it's, if it happens, it happens. You know, I, I'm, I'm pretty laid back about it, to be honest. I mean, I think the more people the more that you have, the, the more interesting it gets. But then the more people you have, the more people you've got to keep happy. And um, you need to, people want to get booked on shows. They want to see themselves. They want to make sure that their wrestler looks good on the TV, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it takes a lot, you know, and, and sometimes I get lots of DMs every week from people asking for updates, moves to be changed, attires and everything else. And, you know, I always get around to it in the end, but actually, you know, I have to, you know, sometimes I just have to ask people, you know, look, I'm not going to have time to do it yet. Um, it, like I say, it's I I try and keep everybody you know booked all the time. Fairly a lot of matches to keep them happy. And um, if you've got sixty people rather than thirty people, I can imagine 
that it would take more than one person, more than one owner to actually manage all of that. So, um, okay, okay, it's okay for the Fed to grow. You need the people to help out and, and, and help run it as well. So, that is reasonable <clears throat> because I'll be honest, I like I don't really want to be that big. I just want to be accepted into the community because you, you can be big all you want and be like successful with your fed, you but sometimes they just don't really your mojo and your attitude might change and you just want to be well you want to do something that you want but you can't do it because what you're doing right now is being successful but what you really want to do you're scared to do it because you might lose some fans something like that or they might say that this is stupid or they won't understand what you're trying to do so with a little following you can experiment with all you want yeah a hundred percent absolutely and like I've been seeing some feds. They've been like, well, I've been looking at smaller feds. Not the, um, well, I did watch COH, but I haven't finished it. But I watched something like a NEW, WCC. Not the Fire Pro one, but the 2K one. That was, that's using 2K18. Still using it. They're pretty good. I've been you. I've been looking at some other feds, and they've been doing their own thing. That's the best thing about it. Like they might partner up with some other people, but as but they doing their own thing instead of doing what the real company's doing. But they just being original. I I I think I did saw one of one of y'all shows. Y'all are actually pretty cool. I, I need to keep up with y'all, especially if I want to join y'all fair. I need to keep up with everything that y'all are doing. Well, I, I appreciate that feedback, the shows. Um, you know, uh, I've created a number of shows, and uh, I think my shows if on my YouTube channel go back at least five years. So, um you know, from the early days of doing them. And um, I, I've i got a certain way about how we kind of structure our shows and how we do it, like, you know, having commentary on some shows and com not commentary on other shows, having support shows, having pay-per-views, you know. Um, it's It still feels really exciting to me, you know, when I, I get up there and start producing shows and, I guess it's not for everybody, um, you know, but the people that there are some people that really like the way the EWF runs things and its style and its approach to things. Some people think it's quite distinctive. Um, I, you know, that's that's it. it I, I would say, you know, it's not for everybody, but there's a hell of a lot of people out there that uh, really enjoy it and uh, people come back. I've had people come leave and come back, you know. Um, well, that's, that just says everything really that they, they miss the UWF and they, they want to come back because they like the way it runs and they like the style and, and the, the, the flexibility of being in it, I guess. I don't see why they won't come. I mean, they won't come. I mean, yeah, <laughs> trying to word it correctly. I don't see why they won't come back. I mean, they like the way y'all do things. Uh, they, they, and they want to come back. That's them. Because the Sometimes, being original and being different what? makes it all better, especially when it comes down to like trying something new and trying to be different from everybody else. A lot of fans try that, and they start, but they end up being yeah, like every other different fed and all that stuff. So. I'll say y'all probably have an advantage. Same with same with the other friends I mentioned. Y'all probably have the advantage. Y'all guys are being different, even though y'all don't get the recognition from the 
for the top call stars, y'all still got y'all people that will support you. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think it's uh, people that have left. Um, you know, there are some people that have left and are on eFed Hub, and you know they they still talk about the EWF now. You know, um, some guys are recommending us, and I post shows on there as well, so people can see some of the shows and they can uh, make up their own minds. But it's nice when people kind of leave because they needed to leave at the time or whatever they wanted to move on to but still continue to talk about us as a, a good place to be yeah yeah do you think the do you think the eFed hub actually helped y'all the eFed hub um I I think it's a good idea. I think it's worked really well. Um, we've certainly picked up a few people from the eFed Hub. Um, it gives you exposure. You know, I don't see why it can't be helpful. Um, it's nice when lots of other eFeds meet in the same place and everybody gets to talk about what's going on. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, I think it's overall a, a good place to be. Um, and hopefully, you know, if you're on there regularly, then you're going to get a good reputation with everybody and, you know, hopefully people can help each other out, you know. <laughs> I made myself a little meme. It's like I started my feds and then I just ended my feds just as fast as I started them. But now I'm trying to do better. <laughs> Damn it, Cedric. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, um, I also agree with the EFA Hub. Like, it is a good idea. Like, having other people come in and talk about their feds and stuff. I need to update my fed. Or probably just, I'll probably just remove that fed from the hub and just add it my new 2K fed that I'm trying to put in or whatever. But, um, I think. It's helpful, but it could be a lot better if there's some more people coming in, more, more people being active, and more people, well, well, not more people, but, like, more channels to, like, post, like, news or stuff, or maybe have, like, a collaborative show. The DJ Hub do have a collaborative show. That'd be kind of cool. But I don't know uh, how that's going to work. <laughs> a collaborative show is something that I've suggested on there anyway. Um, uh, you know, it's difficult, you know, because at the end of the day, everybody joins the eFed Hub for their own reasons. They've got their own reasons why they're on there. Um, some people just want to showcase their own Fed. Some people just want to see what else is out there. Uh, some, put, some people just want to recruit to their own Fed. Um, and some people just want to show off their skills and talents and knowledge. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I personally have found that I've met a few people that know me from the past, and that's great. Um, you know, but um, I've picked up a few people from there um, that, that know about the EWF and are posted in the free agents channel. Uh I think I agree that collaborative things like, you know, having a show for all the feds on there, all the video feds join, uh, I don't know, put somebody through for a, a big tournament or something like that, a big show, and um, they've got a chance of winning the eFed Hub title or championship or overall whatever. Because, um, uh, you know, the there's a chap on there that owns one of the big – Forum pro board based um, uh, the 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 uh, XHF um, and he he's uh, he's he kind of there's a lot of efeds on as well um, um, you know there's always going to be the problem where there are more efeds than there are people so you know. Sometimes these things are helpful. Sometimes, you know, it's just the same people. Like you say, it could be the same people on there. 
not a lot of new people coming in. Um, you know, it's it just it's just one of those things, yeah. That is a topic. Like more people, you no, know, it's more feds than actual people that want to join feds. That's because I think that is that that is an issue. But it's cool having more feds because it gives like because it gives more alternatives. But the issue is that we need more wrestlers to be on them feds. We can't just create like that's a. I would say that's a that, that's a bigger issue for the board feds than the actual game feds. Because the game feds, you could create the people. Hell, you could like make them do what you want them to do, and also add people like 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 other people um calls and all that stuff. But the board feds, that's kind of a bigger issue. That's just my opinion about it, but. That is an issue, though. <sighs> well, <sighs> right now I'm just thinking about some some stuff for the EFA hub, such as Poppy. We should make like a tournament. Like a game tournament or something. Yeah, yeah. I think um, Abby's going to have to get together with his staff and think about, you know, how to make the place. You know, it's more than just going there and having a chat with other other people and sharing graphics and and show links and things like that. You know, um, it's it, it's it's got to be. A place that people want to go to to you know for a reason you need to get something out of it you know um i think the idea of having big pay-per-views across the feds might be might work you know and um you know people that are representing representing their own feds just to meet on one show or win something you know for them or yeah i don't know uh it's difficult. It's it's difficult anyway, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I agree. There's got to be an incentive for people. What if this might be a different thing? But I'm, but the pay per view work will, will, will work because I did something <laughs> like that. That was because of my own personal reasons. But yeah. But I think the like the Ethan Hub overall good idea. Very good. So there's some more positive, but there are some but there are some flaws with it. But it's easily fixable. There should be more stuff like that. Like a Discord server because you know Discord servers are better than boards. Fight me if you disagree, but um, <laughs> but it but a um community to come together to just showcase their work and their editing skills and graphic skills. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um. The thing is, when you create something like that and you've got over 100 people on it, you know, you kind of need to be around to um, actually manage it and over, you know, see it. And you've got to keep coming up with more creative ideas, you know, because if that dries up, then, you know, the whole thing tends to dry up as with it. So, um, you know, that's when you need three or four people working together, thinking about things and uh, coming up with new ideas. And, you know, that's what makes it fun anyway. That's what makes any channel fun on Discord. You know, I I thought that this, I wasn't sure that Discord was going to be successful for refetting, you know. Um, everybody's got their own views. I don't know. But it's worked out 
that actually it is. There are certain lots and lots of wrestling channels and wrestling related places where you can go and recruit people for your refed. So uh fortunately um it's working out, yeah. It is working out. And I and I and this might be off topic, but I just realized that one of my um flagship shows final show for 2019 just just dropped on my channel i just i forgot all about that i should have remembered but that's besides the point go watch naw homecoming that's the final show for naw and well for 2019 we will pick up we will pick back up on 2020 in january and then if I feel motivated to make new storylines, then I would do it. But that's besides the point. Yeah. But, um, dang, when you realize 2020 is actually a few days away, that's crazy. Oh, well. Hopefully 2020 is the year of the EFEDs because Madness Pro did, like, collab with other feds. Hopefully... This gonna be year of the call feds and e feds in general because this hobby is amazing, just amazing. Well, it's it's certainly good fun, and um, you know that's why we all continue to do it. it there's something that keeps bringing us back into it. So um, I just hope that uh, I I certainly couldn't be doing anything else now. I certainly wouldn't want to go back to written role plays. I'll be it's video all the way. It's exciting. It's uh, you know people joining in, watching the matches, commentating on the shows. It's uh, um, it's just one of those things. And maybe twenty twenty is going to be the year. But I mean, it always seems to re relate to the real wrestling world. If, if wrestling is popular, which at the moment it really is, um, and we're seeing a, an up an upsurge really in uh, wrestling shows on TV. Um, and the popularity of new brands coming in and the women's evolution and uh, the, um, the, the, the new generation of wrestlers training and coming through, um, that's enabling um, a lot more television time for wrestling shows. So um, it's certainly on the up. It could well be, it could be an impact on the EFED world as well. Who knows? Who knows? I feel like EFA is a reflection of real wrestling, but how we want to do it. That's how I felt about EFA. It's like we watch real wrestling, we see the mistakes, and we want to correct them with our own show just to make it look better. It's cool. But yeah. We are, we are we are in hour. It's five oh one p.m. over here, and I just want to say I'm I'm not home and I, and I try to make this podcast, this episode of the interview. <laughs> Wait, am I using the right? Yes, I am. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, um, I I, I just want to get this, get this out there because. I just want to interview somebody <laughs> because having a podcast alone is actually kind of sucky, but at the same time, it's actually pretty fun having, having somebody along with the ride, talk about EFEDs and give and see their opinions about it. It's a pretty cool thing, especially for us to, especially for us to, to actually come together and just talk about what we like to do. Well, yeah. Uh, Absolutely, and um, good luck with the podcast in the future. And uh, you know, I hope it all picks up for you, and uh, the Fed works well. And uh, you know, all the best of luck with your Fed. And um, you know, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, all right, man. So I'm at the end of this episode, and good luck with your Fed. And I hope to, I hope I get a chance to watch it. Most likely, I might watch it right now if I get a chance to, but yeah. Because yeah, I just released an episode, right? 
I think um, Horizon um, is due is due out tonight at some point. That's well, that's on my schedule. <laughs> but yeah, so I uh, thank you for coming. Ho- hopefully, this podcast is not broken. And yeah, thank you for actually being along. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. See you guys. Ciao.